It's your Locked On Flyers podcast for Tuesday, October 4th, your daily dose of Flyers news analysis and high quality content that is wondering just how many points are the Flyers going to be able to rack up this season? Good question. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here with prospect expert Russ Cohen, who's on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. You can follow us on Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. That's where you'll keep up to date on our episodes and Flyers news. You can also email the show at lockdownflyers at gmail.com. On today's show, we are going to get caught up on a little bit of Flyers news from camp and talk about tonight's last preseason game and what we would do with the lineup to answer remaining questions. Then we're going to talk about some of the early preseason predictions that are out there in terms of points each team is going to get and where the Flyers fall on those lists. Locked on Flyers is free and available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you are listening. So subscribe. You'll get all of our episodes here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Plus, we're over on YouTube as well. So subscribe over there too. All right, Russ, we had a day off from camp yesterday. Of course, we have our one remaining preseason game tonight. And In that 24-hour period on yesterday's show, we talked about the Flyers maybe picking up a goaltender on waivers. There were several available uh, from the week's preseason activities from other teams, and they did not pick anybody up. So either they think everybody's going to be healthy or they're confident in who they have. Yeah, I think they think everybody's going to be healthy. I'll, I'll say it that way. Whether that's the case or not, you know, with the Flyers, you always have to sort of hold your breath. Uh, we haven't heard anything about Carter Hart today, and there's a game tomorrow. So, like, I don't know what to say. I mean, I, I would think he has to play, and that's that's where I'm sort of drawing the line. If he can't play in that game, then what? Yeah. Uh, nobody – was on waivers in that next 24 hour period. So not an opportunity to pick anybody up there either. Uh, So yeah, I guess we're just going to have to keep our fingers crossed that everybody's healthy and that Carter Hart can get some preseason action because he definitely would need it going into this season. Uh, One more small bit of news. The Phantoms did sign a couple of guys that were tryouts at camp to AHL deals, uh, Jacob Goucher and Nolan Meyer, the goaltender, who I assume is going to end up in Reading. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, uh, those were good guys to bring in, and I had no problem with those signings whatsoever. Yep, same. All right, so we do have this one preseason game remaining, and we have talked about the biggest couple of problems from the preseason thus far in their lack of ability to score, which I think is pretty big. I think that's a pretty pretty big problem. Mm-hmm. And, and also the fact that they haven't really put systems into place yet. To or really at under- least just, they're pretending like they haven't. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think... That has been the issue, and obviously we're going to get another cut down before this game uh, relative to when we're recording this the day before. But I think that, you know, if we had our druthers, I bet there's certain people we'd want to see in that last preseason game, either to see what's going on with them or to maybe give some prospects or or younger guys one last shot at it. Yeah, um, I definitely want to see Noah Cates in there. And I know he'll be in there, but the funny thing is, is that we know that he likes to play wing, but now Torch tried him at center and he was good at center. So I just don't think there's any avoiding the fact that he's probably going to play center again. I, I don't know if Tortorella will play Morgan Frost at center ever. 
So like in a regular season game. So I think that's where Adam Brooks comes in. So you might as well throw him in this game because I don't think Lisinski's making the team. So I just wouldn't even use him. Um, and I would put Adam Brooks in there as the center, as the fourth line center, because I think ultimately that's what's going to happen. I told you he's like the ultimate tease. He's like a quadruple A guy, but he's like Max Wilman this year. He's filling a void that maybe is a good thing. Maybe is a bad thing. Like, I've made it clear I would play Frost at center and not worry about it because I like everything he's done. I just don't think the coach feels the same way. And I don't know where Scott Lawton's playing. I don't know what line. I don't know what position. I, You know, I didn't expect him to be sort of the lost guy, but he's kind of like the lost guy in this all this right now. Yeah, I think so, too. And I appreciate your strategy here in terms of being the realist in terms of what you think torts will do, because yeah. I'm more of the uh, pie in the sky, what would I do <laughs> right. person here. So I obviously am going to play Kate's on the wing and I'm going to put Frost at center because that's what I want. And that's what right. I think they should do based on where they slot best. And I would put Tanner Lazinski uh, as long as he's healthy um, in that. 4C slot because I want him to be one of those guys that sort of gets one last shot at it as an opportunity to make the team. But, you know, you're probably right about Brooks, but I, I don't want you to be right about him. I mean, um, I'd rather see who, somebody they drafted and developed yeah, take I know. that spot. And you can't put Tippett with Lisinski and Deloria. You're not going to get what you hope to get out of Owen Tipp. You'll get the, the tough side of him. And the occasional go into the net side of him, but you need to put him with someone like Frost that can actually get him the puck in motion, and you're hoping to get goals out of him. I, I really hope that that's what happens, but it probably won't. Yeah. So that uh, what Russ just said was my fourth line option of Lazinski centering Deloria yeah, and Tippett, that's the and I. That would Thanks. And I, I think that for me, that was halfway between what I think they'll do versus what I would want, because I yeah. want Lazinski and Tippett to have a shot, but I, I'm resigned to the fact that Delorier is going to be there. Yeah. So I, it's not the most ideal scenario, that's for sure. But uh, I, I think that's what I would do. And I think Lawton then just sort of ends up as your second or third line center, depending on where they decide Frost is in the pecking right. order, right? So uh, I think, I mean, honestly, well, I, yes, if you're putting Kate's at center, yes, but I, I for think, me, I'm putting him on the wing. I know I, you know, I'm giving up my own thoughts almost on this and just going with options that I think are probably going to happen. And I, I do like most of your options here. Um, I'm, but I do think it's going to end up being like Kate's at three C and, and Brooks at four C that's, that's what I end yeah. up seeing happening. I know. Breaks my heart. Breaks my heart, Russ, because uh, I think these guys deserve the best opportunity to succeed. And I think, you know, putting Frost on a line with Lixell and Allison for this game is could really show what a youth like movement it. looks like on this team. And, um, you know, knock on wood, Wade Allison has been healthy so far. And I, I think this would give the three of them a, a real strong opportunity. But I do want to talk about the defensive side yes. of things as well, uh, because that third pairing, I think, is really where the question mark is. And because uh, we know it's going to be Provorov and Tony D'Angelo and then Sanheim and Risto, like there's no way around it otherwise. But, you know, what would you do versus what you think they'll do? I would do the pair. same thing as you and put York and Braun and I don't know, I have this sneaky feeling that it's going to be like Connaughton and Braun. I know, I know. And again, I know it's a preseason game and it doesn't matter, but it's your last one. And it should be as as close to what you think an opening day lineup could look like. And I think with the pairings that we have, like where is their opportunity for a young guy to come in and get the NHL experience that he needs if you do something like that? To have zero of the defensive prospects be out there for the Flyers makes no sense to me. I know, I know. Um, but problem with this game is this is now a torts coach game, and – I think he wants the, the lineup to be as close to the regular lineup as possible with just a few different things to look at. 
and and that's why I'm even putting Connaughton in there. That doesn't mean York won't play. I think York might play in in place of one of the veterans that he already knows is going to make the team. So, you know, he might even sit D'Angelo and let York play up there, and which is I think would be a mistake. But he's done it. Right, he had him on the top line, top pairing yesterday. Um, but that's what I think is going to happen here because I think, you know, I don't think Sealer's made enough of an impact, but Connaughton seems to have made some impact and he's had him before, and that worries me. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, obviously, the goaltending question is still out there as well. Uh, hopefully, Carter Hart starts this one. Uh, I'm not sure they would have him play a full game, and maybe Sam Erson would play the back half. Do you think it's odd Go that to- we don't even have any information? Yeah. There's a game tomorrow, and it's like a news blackout. Well, maybe something will happen right after we record, as is the, oh, the we're usual recording way. late here. Like, are they going to tell us at seven o'clock at night? Maybe we'll we'll see how that goes. <laughs> All right, we are going to switch gears and talk about NHL point predictions, including where people think the Flyers are going to end up. But first, we're going to hear about Built Bar. If you haven't tried Built Bar puffs yet, you're depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor: delicious. Indulging cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. Let me introduce you to your new favorite cookie dough chunk puffs. Have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks. And of course, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it. Plus, it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. Run to built.com and snag a box for you and the family. It'll be a perfect treat, or you could find a really good hiding place and just hoard them for yourself. What's great about Built is that all their bars are made from collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. You are going to love the new cookie dough chunk puff, whether you need a snack for your workout or late night treat, or just need a grab to grab a quick bite. Built's the perfect protein bar, and they taste better than a candy bar. Ditch the calories, fat, and sugar. Grab yourself a Built Bar, go to Built.com, use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 at Built.com. Okay, Russ, we have several different predictions for the Flyers in terms of what people think they're going to get to this upcoming season. And, uh, you know, Flyers definitely underperformed last season as we know it. Uh, last season, Bet Online opened at 94 and a half as the over under. Which is crazy if you think about it. I know. <laughs> Just like, the, wow. Um, those were the halcyon days, I guess. But uh, of course, they finished with 61. This year, Bet Online has the over under at 73 and a half. What's your take on that line? It's interesting. Um, I think there's somewhere between 70 and 75. I think the uh, the line is really close. The interesting thing is, like, they're better than Arizona. I think they're better than Chicago. I'm not sure they're better than the Canadians. I think that's the the battle, and if you want to throw the Sharks in that, too, I think that's sort of the grouping that they're in. So, you know, based on that, based on where the Metro is, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say they're going to be under the 73 and a half. Yeah, I, I think so too. I think it just, it, it's hard to say, obviously, how a whole 82 game season yeah. is going to play out, but we haven't seen anything even that I think is an illusion in the, the preseason to suggest that they can do better than 73 and a half. And man, sometimes betting odds are really spot on in terms of making it hard to pick and that's how they make their money. But uh, 73 and a half is, is a really good line, I think for, for, for them to have come out with because um they could hit that mark just with the, you know, marginal or percent improvement that people expect from John Tortorella, right? Mm-hmm. And and what he could put in place. But the players, in fact, do have to execute here. So, you know, my gut says take the under on it, but are they going to be that far under it? 
like they were no, last I year? I don't think so. A few points. I, I mean, mm -hmm. I think it's that close, but that's where it is. It's like, you know, when you really add up everything, you can't, we, we learned one thing last year. You can't keep hoping for something like hope is not a plan. And so then we see now what we couldn't see last year, as far as guys that were banged up. And now we see what could be banged up for this year. And based on all of that and where they are, even with a new coach, it's hard to put them any higher. Yeah, and will, you know, the improvement that a new coach and or a new system puts together, you know, will that impact be negated by bad luck that this team always seems to run you into with injuries? By, like, let's just say Carter Hart is healthy, and let's just say Torts figures out the defense, which you might. Mm -hmm. They can't score. I know. So I know. That's the problem. Games. Yeah. And, you know, they're going to lose close games. They're going to probably lose overtime games and shootouts that the they get into. They're going to be out there five, six times a night at least. Yeah. And while I think there will be distinct improvement on the penalty yes. kill, and we've sort of seen that so far to oh, some yeah. degree. That's the I, one I area. Think, yeah. Yeah. And I, I just think that if you exhaust them by taking, by having quote unquote tough guy players, we're going to take more penalties. And if that, if that's the way your team is going to play is closer to that edge, they're going to get called more, you know, it's a battle of attrition there that the PK yeah. can only do so much. Right. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a big part of it. And then, you know, if they have any kind of hiccup in the goaltending and I like Sandstrom, don't get me wrong, but now he's banged up, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't, it's hard to be confident about the Flyers goaltending. Matter of fact, this is probably the least confidence I've had in the Flyers goaltending in any year I've covered them almost, except for the years, the year where they were in absolute last place, dead last, they were horrible. But other than that, this is a bad year for goaltending unless things change. And they might. Yeah, I think, you know, if you look at that bet online at, at 73 and a half, and you look at a couple of other, you know, guys with, pretty extensive analytical models here where, you know, Micah McCurdy says 81 and a half is, is where he's at. And I think he then, could be right. Mike is really yeah, good. He could be right. I know. If Hart's absolutely healthy and playing his best hockey, but I don't know if we're going to see that. Yeah. And then, you know, you have evolving hockey, which is at 76.2. So they kind of split the difference. Yeah here and yeah i think really nobody's putting least, them in the playoffs no and i think everybody has them as last in the division so right. far that i've seen which again makes sense i i just think that there is a little bit of give in the point totals here and i think it is absolutely mostly due to the question mark and goaltending and then even if one or two guys start scoring, that could make the difference in like three or four, maybe up to the six games. That yeah. would be the difference in that point total. Yeah. The one thing I'll say though is, um, and this is nothing against evolving hockey. I always like Micah's charts better because he has a better flair for color. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, they have different models um, and different ways of, of presenting it. I mean, he's but... using, I mean, Mike is using fuchsia. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> he does have good charts. Um, I especially like his heat map charts, yeah. Uh, yeah. which which are like Rorschach tests. Yeah. Um, I highly recommend <laughs> looking at those. Put them at a late late at night. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that it, it's going to be one of those years for the flyers where I think things could actually go really well. And we could end up at the high range of these, you know, margins here, or things could go exactly the way we think. And they'll still be in last place in the division <laughs> either way. Right. I mean, it feels like we're just in a circle here and, you know, we're all close in the number. Like, I, we haven't found one outlier yet that really believes in this team. That's the crazy part. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think so too. And uh, we're going to talk about where some of the other teams in the division are on these charts and, and, and where the division could play out coming up next. But I, I do think that uh, while nobody is an outlier on the flyers. There definitely are some outliers for some other teams in the division and, and around the league. So I'm very uh, excited to get to that part of the conversation coming up next. All right, Russ. So looking at some of these point predictions that we have so far, I think in the Metro, the thing that interests me the most outside of really the overwhelming consistency on the flyers is that while everybody thinks that the Columbus Blue Jackets had a tremendous offseason, you know, people are still questioning their ability to even contend for the playoffs this upcoming season, uh, looking at their analytical models. Like, what do, yes, what do you I'm take not. away from that? I'm not. I think Line A and Goudreau are going to be magic. I think the world of Wierenski, I, I think they're going to get um, some youth help from youth, younger players. I believe in them. I do. I don't, I don't know what there's not to believe in at this point, unless you don't like Elvis. And I think even Elvis has proved himself to some degree. I mean, you know, they lost sports strand fine, but I still think they're pretty damn good. Yeah, I, I did think it was pretty interesting because there there were a couple of analytical notions here. It wasn't even just like one outlier that said the Blue Jackets were going to still be near the bottom of the division. We have multiple outlets, including Micah McCurdy and Evolving Hockey, that that think that Columbus isn't going to take that jump forward, um, you know, with Micah even suggesting that the Blue Jackets could be about even with the Flyers at the bottom of the division. And and that really surprised me a lot. And I think this is going to be a huge case study this upcoming season of the eye test versus the numbers test and what, you know, the results end up telling us about Columbus. And uh, I think the other big difference, I think, in some of these models is where the devil's are going to end up. And a lot of people seem to think the Devils took a significant step forward and they could compete for playoff spots. And yet, you know, Micah says, oh, the Devils are just going to be a hair above, well, not a hair above, but they're going to be in like third to last in the division that, that the other teams doesn't believe in their goals. That, that's yeah. what that means. Because there's no other reason. We know they're going to have good offense. And I think Jack Hughes showed us last year that you know he's going to be one of the better players in the league uh he, he had a hell of a season does need to stay healthy no question about that but um end of the day i think they did enough i mean hamilton seems completely better than than last year maybe he's fit in better but you know i i like what i'm hearing when i'm listening to some of these preseason games and the way he's um shooting a lot i, I just I think the Devils, um, they're going to be right in the mix. It's just a matter of will they get the right breaks and just a little bit of goaltending. They just need a little bit of goaltending. Yeah, I, I think that could be. It's also going to depend a lot on you know some of the younger guys taking a step forward this year. Um, mm -hmm. Interested to see how Hughes plays this season. And I, I do think that um, they will do better than that. Um, you know, because Mercer is going to be a, a regular more, you know, mm -hmm. even more than last year. He played every game last year, but he can add more goals. Holtz might make the team, maybe not. Uh, by the end of the year, they'll have Luke Hughes to add. I'm sure of that. So just need some goaltending, man. Yeah. And I, I think there is. I think a lot less certainty about the devils than there is about the flyers or even what some of these guys are saying about the, the blue jackets, because right now um, evolving hockey has the devils pretty high up in the division, like 
kind of in the two, three slot in the division. Now, everybody seems to think that the Metro division is weaker overall this season. So um, I think really the Canes are the only team that people think will have more points this year than did last year overall. But I do think that, um, or at least more points than predicted. Um overall but I, I think the devils are a giant question mark in the division i think they're more of a question mark than than columbus for sure i mean again kent hughes could be a massive addition to columbus and i don't know if these groups you know micah and evolving hockey are really taking into account the kind of offense he could add so i think you know that's something just out of the gate that sort of struck me and like i said i just think with the devils there is going to be one of these years where it does click. And if it does click, they're going to be dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. It's uh, it's just a weird year because if you look at kind of all of the teams holistically, you know, like you, like you said uh, earlier that the Flyers are kind of in that group with Chicago and Montreal and Arizona. And, you know, Arizona being the obvious choice for worst team right now. Yeah, and, I mean, they have like a 20-game road trip to start the season. So Yeah, which is what happened to the Islanders last year. Right. And we see and how the that Islanders turned had out. a way better team than the Coyotes do. And they're still talking yeah. about Jaden Chickering before the season starts. So can't imagine why nobody's picking the Coyotes for anything. But um, same with the Blackhawks, same, you know. I, but again, I even look at the Islanders and you could see you could see where the fall is starting to happen with the uh, with these groups, with the Islanders. And we feel that way, too. So that's another mm -hmm. reason where Columbus and the Devils get a chance here. Yeah, the hardest one to pick out of all these is going to be the Penguins. I think so, too. I think so too. And luckily, in order to do that, we have Hunter Hodes coming mm -hmm. on tomorrow's show from Locked On Penguins. He's going to tell us everything that we need to know about the Penguins going into this season to maybe help us suss out that situation. Because I think, you know, the caps are another question mark for me, but mm -hmm. I think. Uh, uh, things could go either way with the pens. I think with the caps, we know what the problems could be. And with the pens, it's a little less certain. So I'm glad we have Hunter coming on the show tomorrow to, uh, to talk to us more about that. Uh, before we go, our Flyers fun thing. The NHL is doing a series all season long about women who work in the front office of teams around the league. And this week they are highlighting Katie Yates from the Flyers. She was hired uh, toward the end of last season as a hockey analyst and uh, really excited that she is getting the spotlight right now and that they've started to branch out their hiring a little bit with the Flyers. Hopefully that continues. And uh, so you can read up on Katie, a uh, link in the show notes. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like it. Um, I can relate with her on the favorite movies, you know, anything Marvel, X-Men. You know, anything Marvel is pretty good these days. So she's good with me. Yeah. All right. Uh, we will be back again tomorrow, like I said, talking about the pens. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. Send in your questions via Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. You can also email us at lockdownflyers at gmail.com. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at rmiriam. That's R-M-I-R-I-A-M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. You made us your first listen today. Now make your second listen, Locked On NHL. Locked On experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. So stay up to date on everything in the hockey world with Locked On NHL, your daily NHL podcast. Have a great day, everyone.